Hey guys, Andy back here from Mediocre Hobbies, bringing you the other character from the new Soul Forge King box set. I did Vashdorf for you guys last Saturday, um, and it was a big hit. You guys seemed to really enjoy it. I even managed to get mine on the uh, Warmer Community painting article, so I'm quite proud of myself for that one. Uh, but now it's, of course, going over to the much nobler side of the box set and getting Azrael done. Azrael was actually the first metal Space Marine miniature I ever owned back in the day, so I'm very excited to be finally painting up the new plastic one and getting it ready for the tabletop. Before I get into the video, I just want to say a huge thank you to all of my active patrons. Without you guys, I wouldn't be able to keep the lights on and the cameras rolling. If you're interested in getting involved with my Patreon and my community, uh, there are links to all of that below. Some of the benefits are, of course, the Discord server and an extra video every single week. So that means you get an extra 52 videos a year from me as being a member of my Patreon. So if you're interested in that, like I said, the links are below. Without further ado, let's get into Asriel. Okay, so here is Azrael, Grand Master of the Dark Angels. Well, for now anyway, rumors are to believe he won't be in charge of the Dark Angels for very much long. I've done a little bit of sub-assembly of leaving the Watcher in the Dark holding the scabbard of his sword and the backpack with the back banner off for ease of painting, got the model sprayed black and then gave them a dusting of grey sear to give the contrast paint something really nice to grab. From here we started with the robes as the first bit we're going to put paint on and I'm going to use Agaros Dunes Contrast for all of that. This model is 80% robes so it's definitely one of the more focal parts of the miniature. You'd be surprised you'd think that the boss would be uh, covered in armor a little bit more and kind of give that Dark Angel feel but he definitely likes having his, his big sushi robes on so we're going to put a lot of time and effort into those more so than any other part of the model. Eggrest Dunes makes a really nice base coat for those kind of creamy uh, cloth. It settles really nice into all the recesses and gives you a perfect tone to work up from. Of course, we're going to go with the Watcher as well, as he's the same thing, wearing all robes. There's obviously multi-part options. If you decide to build uh, Azrael with his helmet off um, and he's got his bare head, then the Watcher carries his helmet. Also, all the other details like the Aquilas and stuff on these models were done with the Egros Dunes because that's the color they are. Dark Angel's green contrast surprise price was then used for the Dark Angel's green armor across the model. Like I said, there's not a lot of it to do, to be honest with. It's like the, a little bit of the chest. You got to find his little feet tucked away under the robes. Uh, he's got some extra armor that's coming out from the cloth, which is a bit bizarre, to be honest. Um, uh, and then, of course, his shoulder pads and arms and his face. There's also other bits like his backpack and stuff, so don't forget about those. I'm not going to show you every single step on the backpack or the watcher as I go. We're going to be using exactly the same colors as we go on this guy. So if you see anything that's appropriate, so if you're going to go with the big red wings on the helmet of uh, the model, then, of course, the red trim going around the banner is going to be the same color. So just copy along and do the same steps. From here, we're going to jump over to Volpus Pink, and that's for that second inner layer of robes. That's kind of like a nice pinky tone. It's a really nice color that sets off the, uh, the kind of cream and green really nicely. I also decided to use this for all the wax purity seals. It made a really nice spot color throughout the model, as he's got quite a few purity seals on him. Also, the handle of the sword. Almost forgot about that bit. Wildwood was then used for uh, his basically his belt. Belt runs around the back and has a bunch of pouches and the holster for a pistol and stuff like that. So we did all those in Wildwood. Quick and easy step, but works a treat. Obviously, this guy is only currently available in the new box with him and Vashtor. I'm not going to lie, when I first got my hands on the box, I did think that it was a... Uh, it was going to be Vashtor, it was going to be the difficult one to build and paint, but it turns out it's not. Azrael is the one that uh, has just a lot more detail to him, a lot more bits and pieces. So many little steps, so you just got to take your time with them. None of it's particularly difficult, it is just a little bit time consuming. I'm using Blood Angel's red contrast for the red parts of the model, so obviously his big wings, the casing of his bolt gun, and then any other steps, like I said, the bordering on the backpack banner uh, will be done in that color as well. 
the box set that has these two guys in was actually very kindly sent to me by Games Workshop. So a huge thank you to them for sending that out so I can make these videos for you guys, helping you get these painted and on the table as quick as possible. We jumped over to Black Templar contrast here for kind of his tilt shield, actually the inner part of the shoulder pad. That may be a part where I made a mistake. I thought it was only on one shoulder pad and I think it was supposed to be the inner part of both shoulder pads were black. My mistake, if I did that, I left one of them green. You might want to do both of them black, but the, the armor's so dark anyway that it's it's hard to kind of tell if I did it right or I did it wrong. Also like the piping going around the uh, underneath of his helmet and those bits are also done in the black. I then jumped over to Lead Belcher to basically all the metallic parts that aren't going to be gold. So the majority of the bolt gun is going to go with silver apart from the red casing. And then there's a few other bits hanging off him, the blade of his sword, and some keys and other odds and ends, the handle of his bolt pistol sticking out of the holster, all those bits are going to go silver. From there we're going to jump over to Retributor Armor Gold. And get all the other parts of metallic base coat. So the hilt of the sword, he's got a laurel going around his head, a big kind of metal thing in his forehead. And then there's a few other details, um, like etched details in the armor. Um, on the their example, they were doing the same kind of bone color scheme that the shoulder pad piece was done there and the chest piece. I decided there was kind of enough of those parts around the model, so I decided to go around and do them in gold. They're mainly located on his greaves on both sides. I just decided a little bit more flash of gold would be a little bit better for me. You can obviously choose to go back and do it in the bone color if you so choose. I like bosses having gold. I always like the idea that the more, the higher rank you are in the Imperium, the more gold you get ostentatiously printed on your armor. So here he is with all of the base coats applied. It's time now to shade the model down. So for this, we're gonna go for Seraphim Sepia and apply this to every single part of the model. It will work a treat on the robes. It looks great on uh, all the gold, uh, cream, red, anything you can think of. It's going to make the model look really nice. It's going to help seal all the contrast in and protect it. Here's the banner that I've been working on as I go along. As you can see, the banner is quite a dark piece. There's supposed to be flame motifs behind the uh, angel part. I just decided to ignore those, to be honest. I prefer the, the angelic look. I did some work on the base, but I'm still waiting for it to fully dry before I continue. So I'm going to continue painting the model while that's happening. But it is just the Martian iron crust that I have applied now. It's time to go over to Caliban Green and start to build up that armor color. And this is where I'm going to take my time and be super careful. Because I want to leave that dark, um, dark edge green contrast washed with sepia. That stage, I want to leave that in all the recesses and cracks. And I just want to bring the kind of flatter areas up a little bit with this color. Important at this stage not to hit anything other than the armor as we're going into the final kind of steps of everything. It's kind of the reason we started with the green because everything else is kind of on top of the green so it would be hard to paint past that to get to the green later on. Carg stone is then my color of choice to finish off the robes. I did this on the previous Dark Angel video for that lieutenant. I think the result came out really nice. I was really happy with it. And of course I want to match him in. I'm reckoning they're going to be a small force of these guys done up for me in preparation for, I hope, the rumors that are true that we will be getting the line miniature at some point in the near future. Maybe for the new 10th edition that's supposedly coming in summer. So with that being the case, I think it would be rude not to get a small Dark Angel force up and running and ready to receive their new lord. Cargstone is obviously not a very strong color. It doesn't give amazing coverage, which kind of works in our favor. It, we want those kind of two or three very thin coats to build up his robes. We don't want it to just look like, you know, a solid color. We want there to feel like it has kind of texture to it and layers to it. Obviously with the Cargstone, I'm going to use the same color for all of those really nice Dark Angel symbols that are done in that bone white. And as you can see, I've got a fine pointed brush and I'm taking my time with these. Remember, this is the boss of the Dark Angels. The guy that should be leading your armies. The thing that when people come over and look at your army on the table, they will pay the most attention to him. So spending that little bit of extra time to make sure the lines are all crisp and everything is, is the way you want it to be, I think is going to be super important. Obviously doing the watcher as they go along. And here we are going in with the second coat. And as you can see, it builds up a much stronger coat with the second one. 
it stops looking like a burlap sack and starts to look more like his robes of office. Like I said, I'm gonna carefully go around the whole model, all the cloth, all the white bits again with a second coat of carrick stone and make sure I get to the point that I'm happy with. Same result on the banner, going for the wings coming out of the back of the angel with the carrick stone, all the purity seal fabrics, all the parchments coming off of purity seals, they were all done in the same color as well, the carrick stone. As you can say, after the second coat, it really does make a huge difference. The model starts to look like a completed miniature. So now we're just gonna power through with that and get it done. So Screamer Pink was used to highlight all the Volibus Pink parts we did at the start, which of course is just his inner robes and the, the wax part of all the purity seals. It's just gonna make all those pop. I do like the idea, like I would love to know the mindset of the master designers who uh, picked all these paint schemes. Like they, to me, they basically make the right choice all the time. But at what point in this design, they were like, cream, green, ah, throw in some pink robes underneath. That's what he needs. And it works beautifully. But I wonder what the thought process was. Mephiston on red was the first highlight we're going to do on all the red parts. So that goes for all the casing on his bolt gun and his big glorious wings. So during the painting process of this miniature, the wings, um, and the back banner were actually a source of internal debate for myself. I feel like if you give him the winged helmet, the back banner plus the winged helmet on the same part is kind of a bit of overkill. The wings block the banner. It seems like it would be super awkward running around the battlefield. It's just a lot of vertical movement with the sword, both wings and the banner. So I intended to cut the banner off my one. Obviously I'm gonna leave it on to show you guys what it looks like at the end. But I'm not sure if it unbalances the miniature. When he has his bare head, so he doesn't have the winged helmet on, and then he has the back banner, I think it looks amazing. I'm not sure if both work. After the Mephist on red, we're going to go for Evil Sun Scarlet, because we really do want to pump that red color uh, up to its height. These wings are obviously a huge focal part of the model. As you can see, I'm going kind of feather by feather across the wings, taking my time, making sure that they pop. Same with the casing on the bolt gun and obviously I did the trim on the banner and all that kind of stuff like I was saying as I went along and if you do take your time and you manage to leave all those nice dark lines between the feathers you're going to left with a really nice result iron breaker was the metallic of choice for layering of both the gold and the silver parts you take go back to lead belcher for this but because obviously this guy is a lord this is a relic sword of the Dark Angels. It's supposed to stand out and be something a little bit more special. I wanted to definitely have that like sharp sheen that you get from those uh, kind of pieces. So Ironbreaker, yeah, run it down the blade and as you do the touch highlights on all of the other gold parts. I then went for a pure white, painted that into his eye lenses and on the plasma coils on the bottom of his bolt gun. Obviously, it's a combi bolter that I haven't mentioned once in this video so far. But yes, Azrael does carry a combi plasma bolter. So those coils, we want to get uh, with the white. Being careful not to hit any of the rest of the bolt gun. The model is really starting to come. It's like it's, it's so close to being finished. I'm super excited to see it. Talazar blue was used for the plasma coils. As you can see, it goes up into the slits in the front and they've kind of started doing that. I don't think they ever really used to do that. Those kind of side ports get a little bit of blue glow as well. I think that really helps the models out. With that really cool plasma effect. After that, we jumped over to Blood Angels Red and we're gonna paint that into the eye lenses to give them the glowing red look. Dark Angels have glowing red eye lenses. So go ahead and get that in. From here, we're gonna jump onto Mornfang Brown. I may have slightly forgotten about this stage until now. You can do it earlier in the steps if you want to, but it's just to highlight the leather belt, holster, pouches, all those bits and pieces that we did the Wildwood earlier on. Obviously there's nothing wrong with doing it at the end. All the parts are very easy to get to. I stuck on his back banner and put the Watcher on the base. And we have one finished Azrael Lord of the Dark Angels. 
really happy with the result. Can't wait to put on my shelf next to things like Hellbricked. Uh, those new models with multiple miniatures on a base. So setting a real scene. Love it to bits. I hope you guys are happy with it. Let me know in the comments what you think about my back banner slash winged helmet conundrum. Do you agree with what I say or do you think I should leave it alone? I hope you guys learn a thing or two from the video. Enjoy. Okay guys, and there we have it. Azriel is painted up and ready to serve. He was a, a much more complicated miniature to paint than Vashtor. I know that's a very bizarre sentence to make. It wouldn't seem so, but he has a lot going on from whether it's the familiar on his base or the watcher on his base, sorry. Um, to his big back banner to his head. Um, I'm not 100% sure whether I'm going to leave the back banner on the miniature. I think the back banner looks absolutely fantastic when it's unhelmeted, but I think as soon as you put the helmet on and his big wings go up, there's too much like vertical motion in the miniature. I think the aesthetic doesn't really work. So I may remove the banner from my one, um, but you know, we'll see how that goes. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you give it a like. Subscribe to my channel if you are not already. It would mean the world to me. It takes two seconds out of your day. And if you are interested in asking any questions, put them all in the comments below and I'll go back to each and every one of you guys. Thank you so much for sticking around to the end of the video. Thank you once again to all of my active patrons. I'll see you in the next video.